the spine twist, or in Sanskrit, Ardha Matsandrasana. Now, they don't name the posture after the movement of, or twisting of the spine. They named after a famous yogi named Matsyendra. So we're going to first talk about why they name it after Matsyendra. Then we're going to head into the studio with Bark and teacher Wendy Castorina and break down this pose. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, if it's the first time we're meeting, my name is Jimmy Bark and been teaching hot yoga since 1981. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, and hit the like button if you started getting good content from this video. Spine twist, Arda Matsandrasana, which means half Lord of the Fish's pose. So here's the story real quick about why they called it Matsandrasana. There's a famous yogi named Matsyendra right around the 10th, 11th century. And this is the story. It's like, almost like the tale of Jonah. He's swallowed by this large fish. I know Jonah was a whale, but this is a fish. He's swallowed by this large fish and the fish swims to the bottom of the ocean. Now Shiva, even though he's omnipresent, was at the bottom of the ocean and he was giving a lecture to his wife, Uma. At the end of the lecture, he sees that she's fallen asleep Maybe some of you are doing that right now. And he says, who has heard my words of wisdom? And out of the belly of the fish is Matsyendra. He calls out, I heard you, master. So now he initiates Matsyendra instead of his wife, Uma, on the teachings of tantric yoga. Twelve years later, the fish is caught. And they rip open his belly and out comes Matsyendra to take such a twist in his life to teach now tantric yoga and Shiva's teachings that this is one theory they named the posture after him Arda Matsandrasana so that's the end of our history lesson let's head into the studio with Bark and teacher Wendy Castorina and we're going to break down this pose beginning to advanced so here we are at our Fort Lauderdale studio with Bark and teacher Wendy Castorina now she's going to first show you the first modification the extreme modification, if your hips are really, really tight, this is called Sugasana, just folded legs. She brings her left hand in front of her body, right hand behind her lower back on the floor, and just twist to the right. And then same thing on the other side, right hand in front, and twist to the left. And then back to center. And that's the first modification. Now for the second modification. This is still if you have tight hips and you're able to get to the full position. So Wendy's just going to extend her left leg straight out in front. Bring her right heel over just by the knee. Her left arm over the top and she can keep the elbow bent at first. This way you can continue to push against that upper leg as you twist to the right. And then your right hand is going to be at your lower back that's going to give you a brace. Now you may have a little more rotation in your shoulders, so you can reach down and grab the calf muscle. Same thing, you're twisting right, pushing back left, because that's the opposite direction you need to create to get the spine twist. Now, as you get a little more flexible in your hips and you don't need the modification, now what Wendy's going to do is bring her left leg in underneath her. The heel. This is probably, this is my, maybe the biggest thing I'm going to tell you about this pose. And maybe the biggest correction I make almost every single class for the floor postures. It's this heel. What happens is, most people, this heel comes back here by the thigh. So now if Wendy were to bring her left arm over the top, she's gonna have a really tough time grabbing this bottom leg. So they end up keeping this elbow up because they think they can't do it. So here's the correction. Like I say, maybe the biggest one I do in my career for the floor poses, is this heel's got to come all the way up to the knee, right here, just to the left of that knee. And now she's going to have a lot more success in getting this left arm over and holding the bottom knee, holding that bottom knee. So it's there you still can't get the bottom knee. It's impossible. Shoulder tension, hip tension, whatever. Now, this is another modification, the third modification. Just keep this elbow bent palm facing that direction. So then you're pushing against that leg with this left arm. But hopefully, if you bring that heel forward, then you can grab this bottom knee. So you got the heel, hand, and knee all touching. 
Now I had Wendy magically turn this direction. So now, once you can grab that bottom knee, your right hand can be right here at your lower back, and that's a kickstand for you now to twist to the right as you push back to the left. You can get that opposite direction. So that's the first thing you can do. If you have a little more range of motion, this palm facing outward is going to hold that left hip. Palm outward facing, lifting the chest for the position of your hand. Now as you get more advanced, this is more now the amplification, you can reach over and grab that thigh. Look how nice Wendy can do that. She grabs a hold of that thigh, and then this shoulder is actually going to be higher at the advanced level than the other shoulder as she twists right, again pushing back left. So now, once again, we've magically turned another direction to give you a better view and a different view. So now you've got your bottom knee. And, let's, and this foot here is really important because sometimes this foot's too far over to the side. You want that foot to come right in close to your body, but not touching it. You're not sitting on the heel, but it's right next to it. So both your butt cheeks are on the ground. Right? My Remember I, used to tell, I told you this before, my teacher would say both butts on the ground and I'd say no bigger, one butt, two cheeks. So this hips on the ground and this toe is going to point. And now you're going to twist around to the right as you again push to the left. Remember you've got to have that opposite direction, pushing that, left, that top five with the left arm. And if I were to hold Wendy's hip here and now have her turn and grab her thigh, now grab, grab your, your thigh up. As she twists to the right, I'm holding this hip down. That's the feeling you've got to create to hold the hip down yourself. That creates that washcloth ringing motion is what we want. Get the whole thoracic to have that wonderful spine twist. And one last amplification. This is the most extreme amplification. If you're really flexible, what we're going to do is you're going to take this heel, now you're going to do the exact opposite of what the modification was and bring you forward. You're going to bring it back here. Now her arm is going to come over the top and hold the outside of her thigh so that this forearm and the shin are parallel. Also when you get to the full position when your heel is forward to your knee, same thing. The shin and the forearm parallel. But look how nice that is. Now Wendy's going to reach over with her left hand hold the thigh and look how her left shoulder is higher that's going to show a really good advanced spine twist as she twists left she pushes back right now she's doing the other side if you've noticed and that's the full version uh, or the full amplification of this pose so that's our episode for today big thanks to wendy for helping out demonstrating this pose she does a really good job with this pose don't you think if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell, then you get notified when I post a new video. And please hit the like button. It really helps us out on our channel. I thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I get to all those comments. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye, everyone.